Okay, it's the top of the hour. Uh, but I don't see yet everyone who we expect uh, uh, today. I don't see David actually. Maybe let's get uh, uh, started with uh, uh, the intro part. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this interim session of the ITF Tech Networking Group. Uh, Lou Berger and myself, Janos Farkas, co-chair the working group. And uh, we thank uh, for Eve Schuler, uh, for our secretary, for her great jo job she's doing. Uh, I would like to remind you that uh, this is an IETF meeting and uh, IETF rules and policies apply. Uh, by participating, you accept uh, uh, to follow uh, and agree to follow these rules and policies. This is the usual IETF note well, uh, which is a, a summary. If you are not familiar with uh, these rules and policies, uh, then please check at your own leisure, uh, following, for example, the pointers. I would also like to remind you that um, all the contributions uh, remain uh, or become uh, uh, part of our permanent records. So everything you contribute here at this meeting, uh, for example, also part of uh, the permanent records. And uh, this is a reminder uh, about how do we conduct our meetings, uh, like uh, professional behavior, and uh, please uh, participate with respect and uh, courtesy to your colleagues. Uh, this is uh, one of the virtual meetings. Uh, I guess everybody is now familiar with uh, uh, the virtual meetings. And uh, I would like uh, to remind everybody that uh, this is a, a usual joint note taking during this meeting. I also gave uh, the link to our hedge doc uh, for this meeting uh, to the chat window. So uh, one uh, key aspect of this meeting is discussions and uh, uh, capturing the discussions uh, is essential uh, uh, during this meeting. So uh, please um, join uh, uh, the common uh, note taking. And uh, with that, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, few items on the agenda. Uh, we are at the intro and unfortunately I made a typo uh, we have a presentation with discussion from David, 50 minutes, uh, and another 50 minutes from Gino. Uh, David is our uh, technology uh, advisor and also kindly has been leading uh, the open uh, meetings uh, on the scaling queuing. And uh, he kindly uh, offered to share some uh, thoughts uh, uh, and considerations for the taxonomy as input for discussion. And uh, as I mentioned, the discussion is a key part uh, at this meeting. Uh, uh, so uh, feel free to speak up. We use, as usual, uh, we use the Miteco tools uh, joining the queue. So please raise your hand, join the queue, and express uh, your opinion. Uh, and the second presentation is from Gino, uh, who with co authors uh, submitted uh, also a draft. And uh, we'll be giving also input uh, to the taxonomy. Let me ask any uh, questions, comments before we actually start with the presentations. Okay, uh, nobody in uh, the deck. Uh, so I uh, share your deck. Uh, David, uh, do you want to, I can give you the control or you can just Tell me to flip slides. Uh, which way do you prefer? How about you give, give me control? Let's see if that works. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Now, finally, I give you the control. Okay. I do believe I have control. Uh, the Meet Echo folks are getting better and better uh, at this. Okay, so uh, 
Lunianis uh, suggested that uh, I put together a couple of slides to, to, to try to sort of uh, set the framework and context of the meeting. The primary purpose of the meeting is discussion, not listening to, to me talk. So I only have two slides after this title slide, and this is sort of a uh, where are we and uh, what are we trying to, uh, to do next? So. Um, We've been working on the enhanced SetNet data plane. Uh, there's a number of proposed mechanisms. We've done some initial evaluation of them against requirements. In general, I think the summary is proposed mechanisms generally address the requirements. Partially or completely, it varies by proposed mechanism and requirement. We don't have any sort of major gaps or places where there's only one mechanism uh, that meets a particular requirement. This is useful information. It's also resulted in improved requirements draft. So I think it's been time and effort well spent. So the next step is to look beyond the requirements to decide what to standardize. Um, observation here is particularly if you go back and look at the use cases uh, RFC, different mechanisms will be more or less applicable to different sorts of networks. But an exhaustive applicability analysis will be exhausting, and that little uh, uh, rectangular uh, box was a smiley face in the font I originally used on this slide. Oh well. Um, now, it's interesting to observe that uh, when IEEE was working on TSN, they standardized multiple TSN mechanisms, and they had good reasons to do that. Uh, that suggests that multiple DetNet mechanisms should be okay especially if we can draw distinct applicability differences. This mechanism works better for this sort of problem, this sort of network, that one works better for that sort of problem on that sort of network. And so that's where the taxonomy uh, enters the, the picture. Um, we had a little bit of discussion about this at the last interim meeting and hoping to have more here. The role of taxonomy is to characterize proposed scheduling queuing mechanisms identify key differences and their applicability implications with the suggestion that the working group might not want to take highly similar mechanisms forward. If there are a couple of proposed mechanisms that seem to do basically the same thing in basically the same way with similar implementation characteristics, maybe we ought to pick just one. But ultimately it's the working group uh, consensus that decides uh, what to take forward. Uh, let me go through one more slide. I'll be happy to take questions and hope to take discussion. So the second slide, uh, taxonomy discussion. That's what we'd like to have here. What are the goals? What would serious success look like? The answer, I think, is agreement on classification criteria for the taxonomy, top-down taxonomy of the TSN and DetNet mechanisms that tells us uh, in what ways mechanisms are alike and different preferably by sorting the mechanisms into categories, and some agreement on the role of taxonomy in working group selection of proposed mechanisms to standardize. So please discuss. This is the last slide I have, and I'm going to shut up, shut up in about 10 seconds. Um, the note takers will record key takeaways in a separate section of the hedge doc meeting minutes. Uh, we've asked a particular Carlos uh, to do this. Um, in addition to capturing points in ongoing discussion so that we can have an open uh, free discussion and then have some record of what we decided. Okay, that's it uh, for what I had to present. Comments, questions, dead cats, rotten tomatoes. Yeah, I, I would like to also add on, on uh... The continuation of like what aspects are we considering when when it comes to taxonomy at the end uh, yeah we started grouping and evaluating the solution proposals but actually at the end uh, we also should evaluate them against the scaling requirements that uh, which ones are actually helpful uh, to meet the requirements Okay, please, uh, everybody, please share your thoughts, uh, uh, comments. Slides can't have been that good. Come on. <laughs> sure.
Shafu, please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, I basically agree uh, and uh, uh, we import from Dava that, that uh, it may be better for us to uh, get uh, multiple solutions uh, and each solution may meet uh, different uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, for example, as I know, uh, the uh, uh, read-based uh, mechanism and the uh, uh, delay-based mechanism. Um, uh, in general, uh, the read-based me mechanism uh, may have a uh, large uh, guaranteed delay, and uh, delay-based or time-based mechanism may provide uh, uh, less delay uh performance so uh yes uh, 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 it's better for us to provide the uh multiple mechanisms thank you maybe uh i don't see too many people in the queue maybe if we move to gino's presentation and come back uh, Oh, okay. Antoine, please go ahead first. Uh, hello. So, uh, in if I remember well the discussions that we had earlier, uh, during last IETF meeting, we discussed about uh, having a common set of use cases to show how the mechanisms behave. Uh, here, I hear David proposing that we have a taxonomy to somehow categorize the mechanisms that are on the line for the large scale that net and data plane uh, problem to solve this problem. So, do you is is the intention to categorize? categorize mechanism and compare them among a wide category or to perform the performance based uh, comparison and then to choose one or two uh, bearing in mind that they are in different categories uh, first uh, thank you for the reminder of uh, uh, our discussion that uh, yes i also uh, have uh, some memories that we wanted to have some common use cases against which we can evaluate the solutions, but we are actually contribution driven and uh, no such uh, use cases and evaluations have been brought forward. So they yes. would be uh, welcome. Uh, I think just grouping, uh, grouping is a good start, uh, grouping of the solutions, but I think that is not satisfactory to decide uh, which ones to, uh, to go forward with uh, like uh, ultimately we, we we want to meet the scaling requirements mm -hmm. and that's the ultimate goal in my opinion okay uh because i don't remember if, if it was a side uh, a side discussion of or if it was shared on the list but uh i got a reference on an, a research article by uh Gino on uh, on which they evaluate the mechanisms they propose as a draft and uh, suggest that we use the same the same topology that they used in this article. I don't remember if uh, I think it's an email that was shared uh, during the last IETF meeting, whether it was in on the mailing list or on the side of the mailing list. I don't remember yet. Um, yeah, now we have people in the queue. I guess Gino yeah. can answer some part of your questions. So Gino, please go yes. ahead. Thank you. Um, <coughs> sorry. The uh, taxonomy draft we have uh, presented, we are presenting today, uh, does not have the applicability or use case aspect. Um, but I think uh, it will be included in the future, uh, in a short term. Or um, you can discuss it today based on the taxonomy I will uh, try to present. Um, the presentation I will give has lots of slides, but uh, I think it is 
better to skip uh, many technical details. Um, let's have some time for the discussion, especially for the uh, use cases and applicability. Thank you. Thank you, Gino. Uh, Shafu, please go ahead. Uh, uh, I have uh, some uh, uh, answer re response to uh, Tony about the uh, common topology. Uh, in fact, uh, we have some initial discussion in the mail list. Uh, I remember that uh, I provide a pay, uh, uh, an, an initial version of the common topology slides and uh, have uh, some initial discussion with uh, Jinu. I think uh, if we have free time uh, that uh, uh, I can give some representation for uh, this uh, common topology. Thank you. David, please go ahead. Uh, David, please go ahead. Helps you turn on mic, doesn't it? Um, I think uh, having a set of common topologies uh, that can be worked as fairly simple examples would be good. I, I haven't seen all the discussion topologies. I think I'd prefer some relatively simple ones to work through as I know the one that we started was initially, uh, it looked like set up to produce maximum interference with a debt net flow over a large number of nodes. And that struck me as testing um, an edge of the envelope as opposed to something that would be, uh, that would be more common. So very interested in what might be suggested for common topologies that we can have some level of agreement on. Yeah, these are interesting and we got to look at them. Okay, Gino, please. Yeah, thank you for the uh, suggestion. Um, I think the topology itself uh, is part of the use case. I mean that uh, for some use cases, the topology can be simple. There are uh, only a small number of flows, but in other use cases, uh, the topology can be very complex with lots of flows and so on. So uh, having that in mind, I'm not sure if we have a common topology yeah. that is uh, useful to useful for every use cases. Thank you. I would agree. Okay. Nobody else in the queue at the moment. Maybe we should move on to Gino's presentation to foster further discussion. So let me share the preloaded deck and uh, I can give you control. While you're doing that, a minor comment. Um, I heard earlier that there was a suggestion to combine uh, topologies with taxonomy, I would suggest that we do the, keep those uh, separate. Uh, again, a minor point. Thank you, Lou. Yes, yes. Thank you, Ayanos. I think I have the control. Okay, so um, <clears throat> as I promised earlier, <laughs> the technical aspect will be uh, explained just uh, as short as possible. And let's have some time for the discussion. Uh, I would like to uh, hear some questions and comments during the presentation. Uh, that would be better, I think. OK, so the draft uh, is co-authored by four people, as you can see here. Thanks for your efforts, uh, the co-authors. Yeah, uh, about the draft itself, the purpose is to facilitate the understanding of the data plane in instrument solutions, uh, which are uh, currently being suggested and can be suggested in the future. So, so the scope is to provide criteria, examples, and strengths and limitations. So um, it would be better to have use cases or applicability, but uh, we missed that 
point somehow. And out of scope, the candidate solutions currently being proposed in the networking group are simply listed without any descriptions in the draft. Yeah, they are intentionally omitted. The enhancement solution can be a combination of multiple data plane entities. And a solution can even include functional entities across network nodes. And um, before going into the uh, detailed taxonomy, I will try to capture that the solutions mentioned in the draft are uh, four types. They are CQF variants, uh, such as uh, CSQF and TCQF, tagged cycling, queuing, and forwarding and ECQF. These are the CQF variants. And the second type is fail queuing variant, that is a C-score, well conserving stateless core fail queuing. And third type is the time oil shape TAS variant. Uh, we have one TAS variant in the networking group uh, proposal. Uh, that is time slot queuing and folding, TQF. And there are all these deadline first um, proposed in the Dead Networking Group, uh, which is the variant of the well-known mechanism that has the same name, EDF. But uh, please remember that the EDF in Dead Networking Group is different from the traditional EDF. Those are the, the solutions mentioned in the draft, I would like to say that. So there are seven taxonomies. Uh, the one is based on the performance. This is what you are looking at. Um, the title of the taxonomy one is per hope dominant factor for latency bound. Uh, this, is the, this is defined as the largest sum term in the expression of the latency bound. when the network and traffic conditions are the worst. There are three categories. The first one is the, um, yeah, it can be named as max pack length divided by service rate of the individual flow. That's the category one. And fail queuing and syscore are fall into that category. The category two is represented by sum of max pack lengths divided by the link capacity. So these two indicators of category one and category two are about the same order that I can say. The category three has a, a, more, uh, a more order. I mean, it, it is much larger. It is sum of maximum burst sizes divided by capacity. So category one has strengths of the individual flow isolation, but it is complex. Category three uh, is least complex, but requires may require a tighter burst control mechanism. Syscore and fail queuing is category one. Uh, deficit round robin is category two. ATS, CQF, and their variants are category three. So this is the uh, <laughs> this is one example. ATS asynchronous traffic shaping so the figures are uh, excerpts ex excerpted from this uh, paper uh, by uh, Lubodek group so the details i would like to try to avoid this uh the this slice is actually the supplement i think the essential is listed in the next slide like that so what you have to remember is two things the first thing is that the interleaved regulator in the ats does not increase the worst latency of the fifo system so here the fifo system's uh, latency is represented with s capital s and the total 
latency is represented by uh, capital C. So essentially C and S are the same. That's what you have to remember. And the second, second thing is that the latency dominant, dominant factor, power hop latency dominant factor, so sum of the maximum burst divided by the allocated rate to the class. Um, yeah, if you ask, if you want to ask some question, I will, uh, I will answer with this slide. But uh, let's skip it for now. Oh, what did I do wrong? No, it's all good. Izo, please go ahead. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, but let me share again. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, Izo, please. Uh... Yeah, Gino, I have a quick question. So the slide you showed just now for ATS, uh, is it? Uh, I, I, I think I think it's from the paper. So is it right? Exact? Is it exactly same as what defined in IEEE TSN ATS standard? I believe so. I believe so. ATS includes uh, two two system. One is the intelligent regulator, and the FIFO system. But actually, the FIFO system can have uh, class-based FIFO queues and the uh, CBS credit-based shaper. So this paper includes all the uh, essential components of the ATS. This. Uh, this what I believe. Thank you. Okay. So I, I think there is a group scheduler in current ATS I, IEEE uh, standard. So it, it is also reflected in the paper. There is a group no. based scheduler. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no? I see. I okay. see what you mean. Um, actually, uh -huh. this paper was published in 19, 2019. Um, it only includes the components uh, reflected in that time around. So okay. any newer components is not uh, listed here. But the important okay. thing is that the dominant factor is decided by the strict priority scheduler. That strict priority scheduler uh, combines all the flows burst uh, into one FIFO. And that is the deciding factor. That is the dominant factor. So, okay. if if even if there are other components uh, here and there, but I think uh, I have to check. But I think that does not uh, make that does not make the dominant factor different. Okay. Yeah, I, I see. Nomi is in the queue. Maybe he would like to share some information later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Shafu is next in the queue. Then Norm, Shafu, please. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I have a similar point uh, with Jinu that uh, this paper uh, is uh, to combine the ATS and the CBS to get a uh, uh, latency and uh, read the service curve to uh, to evaluate the, the the delay performance of the system. Uh, is different uh, with the TS and ATS. Uh, uh, okay, that is my uh, share point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no, no, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, 2019 has been quite a while. Um, uh, the credit based shaper, I, I wouldn't say, is part of ATS. Uh, at all anymore. Um, y yes, ultimately, uh, the strict priority is at the root of everything. Um, so I'm not sure in your diagram, what's the CDT? CDT is um, control data traffic, I believe. Control data ah, traffic, which has uh, the see. highest priority. Yes, you would never do that. Um, 
you, you wouldn't do that because that highest priority data traffic uh, doesn't seem to have a bound on it for how much interference it can cause. And that pretty well blows away any guarantees you've got. So you would allocate, normally allocate that high priority control traffic some bandwidth within ATS and allocate it bandwidth and that way you know what its impact on the network is going to be. Uh, control traffic is normally quite resilient to the uh, any delays imposed by that sort of thing. Uh, you can't have unlimited. You can't have unlimited demand at higher priority than the rest of the stuff, and so that was my two points. That credit-based shaper is not a part of ATS anymore, and I wouldn't put anything ahead of ATS. Uh, in TSN would would not put anything ahead of ATS. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will check any. Um... Oh, David, please. Um, Norm, quick clarification. When you say ahead of ATS, I'm I'm assuming you mean in the packet processing data data path in a node, correct? Uh, I'm saying at the final selection, which is strict priority, you wouldn't have a higher priority than your uh, detnet traffic. Ah, okay. That was that. Ah, that was that wasn't clear from what I heard. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Then you would never have anything at a more important than the the uh, reserved bandwidth traffic. Thank you, Norman. Um, yeah, I will check any uh, recent uh, standard regarding the ATS, and if necessary, I will update. Yeah, it's been published now. Okay, thank you. Uh, 802.1 QCR. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Quebec Charlie Romeo. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll proceed. So, uh, ATS can be analyzed like that um, and so on. The second taxonomy, and so on, and, and from now on, uh, is about the solution's functional characteristic, not about its uh, performance. So taxonomy two is called pre uh, periodicity. The, there is a criteria listed here. I will not go there and to read it. Uh, you can take a look for a while. And if a solution meets that criteria, then it can call periodic. If it doesn't, it is non-periodic. Uh, David, do you have a question? Um, only a wording suggestion. Um, I would change meets the criteria to has the property and does not have the property. I, um, this is this 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 is a subtle matter of English usage. I understand what's on the oh. slide. The slide, and I understand where you're going. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was wondering why should I write there? Actually, I, I was not I was not sure what to write at that uh, part. Been there. Thank understand you. the dilemma. Not a problem. <laughs> thank you. So the periodic um, periodic solutions usually typically has less teacher. But the non-periodic solutions are flexible. I think that's the strength. And as you can see, um, TAS, CQF, their variants are periodic. And ATS, uh, C-score, EDF, and so on are non-periodic. This is quite uh, obvious, I think. But as an example, I put ECQF. This is what I. Uh, got from the tutorial material uh, from Norman, uh, which was held in December last year. So as you can see, the according to the classes, the slots are very well defined. 
And as you can see, the, uh, this pattern of period is repeated. So it is obviously a periodic solution. Here, uh, time slot pattern is repeated. And packet is assigned to one of the finite number of slots with a predefined rule. And the time slot can be overlapped. Here, I would like to check uh, whether this uh, ECQF or the variance of CQF are uh, uh, fall into the one of the three categories we had in the taxonomy one, according to the, the performance. So Gino, uh, Norm is okay. in the queue, if it is a good oh. uh, good time to let him speak. Uh, I mean. Sorry, I didn't remove my hand before. Oh, I thought you would. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, if, if someone has something to say, I would like to hear it uh, immediately without any, oh, no one has something to say. Yeah, I do. Um, as presented, uh, uh, you could draw that inference about the uh, latency bound. Um, however, in practice, uh, it's not required uh, how, how to put this, a bin can be draining and filling at the same time if you have limits on the fan in. So the per hop delay can be less than a cycle, one bin time. Uh, that has not been mm. brought out in the past, and I it's see. and it's it's ongoing work. Uh, it's been pointed out that you could do that, but it needs to be pointed out more because there is there is the perception that you quite reasonably have drawn from the earlier presentation from the, from what you've been told. You can quite reasonably draw the conclusion that uh, a bin has to be filled and uh, before it can be turned, released for transmission, implying a full cycle time delay. That's not necessarily true. I see. Uh, so that's new news for you. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, great news. I mean, I think almost everyone outside the standardization body believes that the CQF, uh, one slot is assigned for the transmission and the next one is assigned for the receive. So it takes turn. So per hub latency is slot time. That's the common belief, I would say. Right. But, and. Uh, mm. uh, that is the way it has mostly been described. So that's why I, I don't, I'm not trying to fault you for, for, for saying that. <laughs> okay. So uh, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's only recently that we've been investigating that further and realized that that's not necessarily true. So more to come there. Yeah, that's, that's a great news. That's a great news. Okay, thank you for the notification. Um, maybe maybe yeah. since you are discussing this and you are unmuted, Norm, uh, uh, just uh, some further clarifications on, I checked the draft and the slides and, and actually maybe it is good to note that the old CQF is nothing else but a very specific use of uh, scheduled traffic, also known as time aware shaper. So it's just a fixed scheme for using uh, uh, scheduled traffic. And, and also on the ECQF, the actual draft uh, QDV uh, covers or includes multiple schemes. So it's not just the 
enhancements or new CQF, but it covers the paternoster and so on. And it's, right. it's under development. Right. Um, thank you. Um, actually, uh, this ECQF part is not described in the draft itself. I just brought it up here for the understanding of the audience. But um, yeah, it certainly has some room for the improvement. Thank you for, for letting me know. Uh, but anyhow, uh, based on the common belief about the CQF uh, operation, this is the well-known latency bound of the CQF. And based on that, the slow time itself is the per hop dominant factor. And in the next two slides, I will, I have tried to, I will, I'll try to explain why the uh, CQF and their variants are categorized into category three. But um, I don't think um, it's meaningless to discuss further. Um, let's let's proceed first, and then uh, if we have some discussion, then let's come back. Uh, let's skip. Oh, what did I wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah, Norman, please. Thank you. Um, uh, Norm, please uh, go ahead and make your comment. I only got a brief look at your next slide. Yeah, you moved on. Uh, the uh, CQF assumes that you have a uh, traffic condition, uh, you, you condition the traffic at the edge. You do not try to accommodate a burst uh, in a, in a normal cycle. The cycles mm -hmm. are for the committed data rate, not, not to accommodate bursts. So any burst will be deleted? No, Excessive burst. bursts, bursts would be buffered at the edge uh -huh. of, of, the, of a segment of the network that's using CQF. And uh, you buffer okay. the burst at the entrance to the CQF so that there are no bursts within the body of the CQF network. Yeah, like this, like this page. So we can regulate the burst at the network edge and transmit one packet in a slot per flow. Maybe this is what we can do. Transmit, transmit a fixed number of, a maximum number of bytes per okay. flow, per mm -hmm. bin. Okay. Cycle. Yeah. Then that would be the deciding factor for the per hop latency bound. Okay. Right, and so yeah. you can when you when you choose cycles, you can uh, choose a cycle that puts a fair amount of data per cycle, which is a waste of system resources, generally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, uh, waste of system buffer space, or you can choose a cycle time that is typical that it, uh, based on your on your packet rate is going to be less um, uh, uh, fewer than one packets per cycle on the average in which case you get higher you get lower uh, per hop latency uh, but but how can you transmit a smaller size byte than a packet? You have you to. Don't. No, I'm yeah. saying you. I'm saying that not all not all cycles contain a any data from that flow, even though it's reserved for that flow. All, not all cycles contain data for that flow. You you over provision the flow and then it moves uh -huh. through the network faster. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Anyway, go I will ahead. yeah I will update accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Shaofu, do you have anything to say? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, according to discussion, uh, 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 especially from the point from normal, uh, 
I wanted to confirm that the uh, uh, for sake of uh, if the flow uh consume wall cycles uh from uh sake of level is that right? Uh, for example, a cycle level contain con con contains uh a bin A and a bin B. Uh, that means that the flow we uh, consume uh, both bin A and bin B at the same time. I don't think I understand the question. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, my question is that uh, for sake of if we uh, take an example that the uh, uh, two bin mode, uh, it contains bin A and bin B. Uh, so for our flow uh, that will be needs to the network uh, and urge, uh, if we consume the beam A and beam B at the same time, uh, as you explained that the, uh, if the bus arrived at the, the edge, it will be regulated. So uh, the regulated traffic will be put into the nearest bin uh, B or bin uh, A or bin B. Uh, that is to say, the flow is not reserved the specific bin uh, uh, specific cycle, uh, but the uh, consume wall cycles from uh, that sigma for level. Uh, it, I think you'd have to draw a diagram to help me out here. Um, but uh, when you say bin A or bin B, are you talking about two bins yes. at one priority level or two priority levels? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, for example, uh, there's a uh, uh, multiple already uh, seeker for. For example, uh, the SIGA for six uh, contains uh, two uh, bins. One is bin A and the other is bin B. I see, yes, okay. Okay, so you could have bin A and bin B at priority six. Yeah. At, an, okay. at, the, edge, at the network edge, the flow will be released to the network uh, if it contains uh, the bus uh, it will be regulated first and uh, then put into uh, put, put, put into bin A or bin B that means it is selected bin A or bin B it's uh, uh, for example based on the arrival time uh, this uh, uh, no, no, sorry uh, based on the uh, departure time from the regulator. Uh, it is not reserved the uh, the cycle A or the cycle B. It just select the, the cycle A or the, or the cycle B that is uh, near to the departure time. I see. I see. Um... It's there. There are right now. There are two ways to pick the bin, and a third one is possible. Has been discussed. Uh, if two adjacent nodes are running at exactly the same frequency, then the frame will be uh, uh, set. In the in the bin that will keep its uh, per hop latency a uh, constant, that will keep the end to end latency a constant. So it will progress very regularly through the network. Uh, if the two, uh, if you're synchronized, and and you're using time of arrival in order to pick the output bin. If you're using the pattern oster algorithm, then for each flow, there is a counter that's dropping frames into the bins, and it will go in the bin 
that is nearest to being transmitted, that will, that will be transmitted soonest, into which it fits and does not exceed that flow's allocation per bin. And if, it's, if the uh, clocks are frequency locked and you're using some information in the frame, some sort of label, some sort of tag or whatever in the frame to select the bin, then it will be uh, based, uh, again, it will be selected uh, in a way that keeps it moving through the network at a constant rate. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Norma, I, 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 I think I have got a point. Uh, that is the, the difference between the time-based CKF and the count-based CKF. Um, my question is that uh, let us look at the uh, uh, flow uh, release uh, and the network edge. Uh, uh, we don't care, uh, sorry, uh, we, we, we don't uh, uh, we put aside the the, the traffic schedule and the uh, uh, intermediate node first. We just took uh, look look at the uh, the network edge. Okay, I I I think we're getting too deep. I don't want to take over the presentation here. Uh, Okay, <laughs> let's go back. Shafu, if you are okay, then I will just proceed. And at the end of the, after the end of the presentation, uh, we can freely discuss, I think, technically, I mean. So, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm sorry for my poor English. Oh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So uh, taxonomy two was about the periodicity. And taxonomy three is somewhat similar thing. It is about network synchronization, whether network synchronization is required or not. Um, we have um, we have put three categories: phase synchronous, frequency synchronous, and asynchronous one. So the name suggests that the phase synchronous solutions require both phase and frequency synchronized and so on. But the interesting thing here is that even the asynchronous uh, solutions may also require loose synchronizations, but with less precision. There is, a, uh, there is a paper mentioned in the draft, but I did not bring it in the presentation, that uh, concludes even the ATS or the interleaved regulator or even per hope, uh, per flow regulators require time synchronizations, but with less precision. But anyhow, how we how we divide the synchronous solutions and asynchronous solutions, there should be an indicator that indicate the required level of precision of the synchronization. There can be many indicators, but I think uh, MTIE, that's the maximum time interval error, can be a good uh, candidate for such an indicator. Anyway, this is the, the detailed technical issue. Uh, based on such an indicator, we can divide solution into three types. I think phase synchronous solutions is too complex and not scalable but it can provide the precise gist control. In the meantime, the asynchronous solutions is least complex, I would say, but uh, may need uh, additional jitter control mechanism. ATS, syscore, EDF, especially in-time mode EDF, are fall into this category. Um, okay, go ahead, Norman. Thank you for that last slide. That was great. Uh, a, a minor point that came up the other day in a discussion. Uh, without some kind of clock synchronization end-to-end, -end, um, 
even if it's NTP, uh, there's no there's there's uh, there's no such thing as one way delay measurement. Right. That's all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So every solution, I think, requires uh, some level of synchronization, but uh, how precise it should be, it is for further study. Yeah. Uh, it is very hard to decide right now. And so here I just wrote up ECQF again <laughs> uh, because this uh, slide uh, specifies that uh, ECQF requires frequency synchronization, especially in the first part of the ECQF solutions, bin selection based on uh, previous hops bin. OK. So let's move on to the taxonomy of four. So this is a new one, not related to the previous taxonomy. By the way, all the taxonomy is orthogonal to each other. So it can be independently categorized solutions, but as you have, as you have seen, some of the taxonomies can be correlated. Taxonomy two and three was correlated, but taxonomy four is quite uh, independent. So here, a traffic granularity is the criteria. The granularity refers to the size and the specificity of the traffic entity the solutions handle. So there are three categories, flow level, flow aggregate level, and class level. Flow here is, uh, can be identified usually by the five tuples. And flow aggregate is a group of flows which shares the characteristics like traffic specification, service requirements, or the routing path. The class, actually class is a, a special flow aggregate. It is a flows that grouped by similar requirements, service requirements, not by the path or the traffic details. So uh, we can say the flow level is finest granularity. And we can say class level is coarsest granularity. Um, the flow level solution has strengths of the accurate or detailed service differentiation can be possible, but it is complex. Fair queuing Cisco fall into this category. And CQF, EDF, and TAS falls into class level category. Then what falls into flow aggregate level? The first one we can think of is the inter, uh, interleaved regulator itself, not the ATS as a whole, but the interleaved regulator itself. If you remember, interleaved regulator is nothing but a, a fee for Q, fee for Q. But uh, in the ATS application, interleaved regulator, the flows are grouped according to its input port, not just by its class, but also by the input port. So in that sense, it can be seen as a flow aggregate level solution. And another interesting solution is the possible enhancement to TAS. Currently, TAS is defined with eight Q system, one Q per class. But there are lots of research activities going on that um, more than eight Qs are assigned and flow aggregate are allocated to each queue. In that case, the uh, GCL or uh, gate control list can be uh, much more complex, but uh, such a research activity is quite, uh, quite rich, I would say. If the queue is assigned per flow aggregate, then such an enhancement can be considered as flow aggregate level. And I think, I personally believe that this has quite, uh, promised, promised future. Uh, so this is the taxonomy four. Uh, 
as I as I have said that the ATS has multi component from a multi component system. The interleaved the regulator itself is full of aggregate level, but it has the strict priority queue and one FIFO queue per class. So uh, by definition, ATS is class-based because the coarsest granularity system dominates the whole system. That's the definition given in the draft. So ATS is a class level. But um, yeah, it has components that are flow aggregate level as well. We, we should have uh, noted that. Um, actually, I didn't expect Norman to be here, so I, I have made so many slides about the ECQF. Uh, let's focus on the bin selection based on counting bytes mechanism. Uh, as I have understood, the, the bin, uh, a packet is assigned to a bin, but that bin is decided by the service history of the flow. If it is the case, it can be seen as the hierarchical scheduler with rate based per flow bin selector and strict priority scheduler. The per flow queue part is the flow level component. But the strict, strict priority scheduler, scheduler is a class level. So the whole system should be categorized as a class level. But for the highest class, uh, class seven, uh, it is effectively flow level. But uh, according to the category uh, definition, the ECQF is a uh, yeah, class level solution. Yeah, Norman, go ahead. I would disagree both for ATS and ECQF that they are a class level solution. Uh, credit based shaper is a class level solution. It lumps flows into a class and it shapes a class and it doesn't shape individual flows. The final classification into priorities regulates the impact that different classes have on each other in details. But in particular with ECQ, it, it, I, I, I can't speak to ATS. Uh, I suspect that that's a, a, a not accurate classification. But certainly for ECQF, uh, there is no fate sharing in the sense of uh, a class base to me implies that uh, one flow can take more than its share by util uh, can can utilize the class uh, allocation to take a bigger share of the bandwidth at some point in its travels through the network. And that's just not true. Uh, the flows don't interfere with each other in any way. Uh, yes, there's a priority mechanism, but that doesn't mean that uh, flows in the same class interfere with each other any more or any less than flows in different classes. So right. when mm -hmm. you say it's class-based, I don't think that, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Right, um, yeah, you, there are. You're lumping them together. With C, <laughs> right, when right, you do right. that, you're lumping them together with CBS. And I think that's uh, that would be a, a, a bad thing to do. Right. Um, yeah, that's why I agree to you. 
A single solution has multiple components, and the components are all different levels. So what I'm trying to say here and there, here and there, uh, the reason I have so much effort in these two slides is that you have to understand that a single solution is composed of uh, multiple levels components. And we have to take that, uh, you have to take that aspect into account. But um, according to the definition given in the draft, anyway, the, the coarsest level components dominates the whole solution. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, there is a room for improvement uh, on that definition. I will think more about it. Thank you. Iju, please. Uh, actually, I, I have quite similar question there. So why, and can you please flip to the previous slide? It looks to me that the class level, uh, also this, uh, the, I think the page, page uh, 12. 12. Yeah, 12. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not this one, this one the, the, with the table. There is a slide with the table. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, uh, based on the, the, the photo, sorry, the diagram you show just now, it looks like the class level is, uh, a typical class level is uh, uh, priority based, priority based uh, uh, traffic scheduler, which is cascaded after a traditional ATS. So it looks like there are it's it's two two things rather than one. And Here. so my uh, the next one, I think. You next see. slide. This one? Yeah, you, you yeah oh. yeah you indicated here. Actually, mm -hmm. the class level is the rightmost one, which is SP strict priority scheduler. Yes. And uh, there uh, the uh, there is another component is a flow level. So it is a two cascaded scheduler basically. Yeah, that's what I have understood about the ECQF. But, yeah. Um... Okay. So so in that case, why there? dominant is the class level what's the implication of it so you go back to the table just now uh, uh -huh. it says the dominant one should be the causest so uh -huh. why, why it is causest if the implication of it is how many staters how many states need to maintain at each of the node for the flow uh -huh. right why not the dominant fact is the finest instead that's, of that yeah that's very um, that's a very good <laughs> observation how how do we define dominant? That's quite uh, yeah. So if the dominant yeah. fact fact is the like the state to be maintained, mm -hmm. then I think the dominant should be the finest rather than the right, cost. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's my Here observation. The, yeah, the the regard about the complexity. Yes, if the complexity is our main concern, certainly this flow level component is dominant, yes. But I was focused more on the performance, the latency. Usually the flow level component and class level components are mixed. Then the component, the class level component dominates in terms of the latency. This, this what uh, we have shown in the, let's say this one, this one. Here, the ATS is a good example. The interleaved regulators is kind of flow aggregate based. And the regulation itself is flow based. But these two fine grained component is dominated by the strict priority scheduler. That's why the performance dominant factor is some of the max burst. Okay, go ahead, Norman. Uh, continue, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I have a quick comment on this. So I kind of think we better not mix multiple a uh, scheduler or or 
all, all traffic selection together to talk about it because it looks to me that the SP, the strict priority, is a man uh, can be a mandatory part uh, to be put after any of the scheduler. So uh, yeah, if this, we talk this, about this like CBS, then we just is, talk about yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's currently the actual uh, implementation practices in about yeah. the TSN TG solutions. The the strict priority scheduler is dominating, I think, in, in terms of the performance. Yeah, so, but, so my point uh, actually yeah, is yeah. if if you put SP a strict priority scheduler after any of the uh, scheduler, then it will make make everything to be class level thing. So right, that's, you're right. Yeah, yeah that's the <laughs> that's the current <laughs> definition of the categorization, but I think um, we can improve on the definition. Yeah, let's let's yeah, yeah, let's do the improvement. Thank you. Norman? Uh, I'm just not sure what you mean by it dominates. If if what what do you mean by the class by the by it it uh, the class based aspect dominates the flow or aggregate based behavior? What do you mean? Here um, in the example of ATS, the every flow within the same class. Are put into the FIFO queue. So the flow have different uh, characteristics and can have slightly different uh, service requirements with different burst sizes for uh, different arrival rates, but they are all mixed up in the FIFO per class. And that dominates the performance of that flow so if a, I, if a class, I, I, th I think i see part of the problem here uh, i think you're assuming that that last queue before the uh before the priority selection is a fifo and it's not a fifo Mm -hmm. I think the point is being made is higher level, which is if you've built a solution out of components that have variable granularities and you want to reason about the properties of the solution, you will in general be limited to the coarsest granularity granularity of all the components involved. So you might have a per flow component but if down at the end, you've got a class-based component, that class-based component um, is unfortunately where the reason about the properties of the overall solution has to start from. Well, you see, the reason I, the reason I, um, the reason this makes me nervous is that I wanna make sure you're not thinking that those are FIFOs, okay? They're schedulers and they have times. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, assuming you haven't totally oversubscribed your network, uh, you're not going to put huge bursts in anything, in any of the queues. Yeah. Um Norman, I think I got your point. You are correct. Because, um, yeah, there is a final schedule here. Yeah, yeah. You, but there you, is you no FIFO transmit, here. Yeah. Right. You There's can't no transmit FIFO. two frames at the same time. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I, so, I yes, there's point. a priority yeah. selector because mm -hmm. you can't transmit two frames at the same right, time. Right, right. But each of yeah. those queues is a, is a schedule. Right. And things uh -huh. can be added at the front of the queue or the middle of the queue or added to the end of the queue. They're not FIFOs. So that's uh -huh. why uh -huh. the, right. the yeah, dominance yeah. I question. Right, right. It, In that it, sense, it makes uh, it sound it, like uh -huh. ATS is a, is a class-based scheduler. Yeah, ATS is a class-based scheduler. That's for certain. But here, but here, as you can see in the third bullet, the latency dominant factor 
I think is a flow aggregate level or flow level, which is same as DRR. That's what I try to say in, in this slide. And DRR is certainly a flow level solution. So um, claiming that ECQF is class level is not correct, as you have uh, mentioned. That's, yeah, thank you. I understand. Xiaofu? Uh, and I'm not sure if uh, my uh, uh, point uh, how discussed uh, by others. Uh, I suggest that uh, um, if we uh, 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 not some solution belongs to uh, uh, some uh, category, uh, it's better to based on the most fine grained uh, behavior. Uh, for that uh, solution. For example, uh, 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 if we look at the uh, ATS, uh, as we know that the uh, ATS, we uh, see the individual flows, but not uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole traffic class. Uh, so uh, it's fun, uh, the, the most fun green behavior for ATS is that uh, it actually see the individual flows. So uh, in my opinion that the ATS uh, is not the uh, class-based uh, category, but uh, uh, flow-based. I'm not sure if I uh, am correct. Thank you. Yeah, as, um, thank you. Thank you for the comments. As uh, Iju has uh, mentioned, uh, what is your main concern? That's the point. For example, um, in ATS, let's go back. In ATS, uh, if you think about the complexity, then the interleaved regulator is complex and it has to maintain its flow state, right? Interleaved regulator has to maintain the flow state. So in terms of the complexity, the, it is certainly flow level. But the, the most important thing I like to look at is the performance. And the class-based FIFO system has FIFO per class, and that is dominating. So that's why I put such a, a categorization rule the coarsest granularity component dominates. But yeah, that depends on the definition and we can, mm, yes. uh, we can uh, improve it later. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on. We, we are taking too much time. Um, yeah. So we only have th three taxonomy left. <laughs> The taxonomy five is work conserving. This is very, uh, very clear. The criteria is whether a solution never idle when there is a packet to send. If it meets the criteria, then it is work conserving. And if solution idles, even if there is a packet to send, then it is no no conserving. The work conserving solutions have many strengths. It has small average latency. And I think this is very important. Small observed maximum latency than the bound and the statistical multiplication gain. Um, and as Iju has mentioned in her email, it fits well to burst traffic without a need for over provisioning. No no conserving solution also has strengths. It can avoid burst accumulation. It is very uh, important uh, strengths. You can control Jitter very, uh, you can control Jitter much better than the work conserving schemes. And the latency evaluation process, as we have seen in the case of CQF, it is very simple. So it, they both have strengths. Uh, DRR of fair queuings is core, is work conserving, uh, and so on. 
And the taxonomy six is quite related with taxonomy five we're conserving, but slightly different. It has a concept of the predefined target transmission time for packet. So whether, um, whether the solution adhere to the target transmission time, the solution can be divided into on time and in time. Um, we are using such terms uh, many times, but uh, here, look at the note at the bottom of the table. The on-time, in-time taxonomy here is about the scheduling decision. It is not about the consequence of the scheduling, whether the jitter bound is also guaranteed or not. Um, so it is slightly uh, complex taxonomy, but anyhow, ATS is in time, as well as syscore and EDF in time mode. Um, in the next slide, I try to explain why the ATS is in time, but in essence, the regulators has so-called an eligible time for a packet. That eligible time is not a target transmission time. It is different things. So ATS is in time mode. So it is interesting to say that the ATS is known or conserving because of the regulator, but in time solution. Okay, Shafu, please. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I interrupted you. Uh, I have some supplement that the uh, uh, EDF uh, can work both uh, on in time or all on time mode at the same time. Right, uh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, EDF in time mode is work conserving, can be work conserving, and EDF on time mode can be non work conserving. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, actually, I think uh, work conserve or non work conserve uh, is not the same thing uh, with the in time or on time. Okay. Okay, finally, the taxonomy seven service order. Um, it is not related to any of the taxonomy before. Uh, and this is one that I am not so uh, clear about the definition or the criteria. So here the criteria is the, the primary service or the decision factor for packets from different flows. Um, as you have seen that our solutions has many our solutions have many components uh, that has its own decision rule of the service order. So the rule for service order decision for a single solution can be a combination of multiple factors, but we can choose the primary service order. For example, uh, DRR, Fairking, Syscore is rate-based. The packet are selected based on the flows rate the packet belongs. Uh, in the meantime, the EDF, early state line first, is, is time based or delay based. And interleaved regulator, it has only a single FIFO. And uh, when a packet enters that FIFO, decides the service order. So IR can be considered as a arrival-based solution, while ATS, TAS, CQF is a complex solutions. They they consider the arrival time, or even the rate the flow belongs, as we have seen in the ECQF case. Um, if you count the uh, the the transmitted bytes for a flow. Then it is similar to the DRR, and it can be it can be classified as rate based. So the the EDF cannot be simply put into the priority based solution. 
yeah, uh, it is difficult to categorize a single solution into any single category. Um, but there is a, such a, a taxonomy. It is very useful. For example, the rate-based solution has the strength of the pay burst only once property, and it has simple admission control process. In the meantime, the time-based or delay-based solutions has, can have precise delay control, and so on. So here are all the taxonomy I have presented in the draft. Um, and this is the conclusion. Oh, Norma, please. Um, are uh, uh, are we? Do we have the same assumption about zero congestion loss? David, um, and is that a criteria? Norm, or is that a Norm, criteria? Did, Norm. What are you what are you concerned about here? I mean, DebtNet assumes no congestion loss as uh, okay, good. Good. as an as an underlying fact as an underlying part of the framework for resource allocation. Perfect, perfect, good. That's that's what I was hoping. And is um, but uh, is are buffer space requirements one of the criteria that you're interested in? because different solutions have radically different requirements for how much buffer space is required to achieve zero congestion loss and how how and when those requirements have to be computed and met and allocated and so on right uh this uh, an important criteria yes but um, I just wondered if that should be part of the taxonomy or not. I would. That sounds like an implementation characteristic as opposed to something that distinguishes Ooh. classes of algorithms. Ooh. I mean, it, it absolutely has to be part of the engineering analysis to figure out what we're going to do. Uh, n actually, no, because, for example, uh, it, it's related to work conservation. Um, the non-work conserving, generally speaking, I think the non-work conserving algorithms have can have smaller, a lot smaller buffer requirements. Uh, work conserving transmit. Uh, you know, uh, if if you're always transmitting, if you have a frame to transmit, you always transmit. That leads. Yes, generally lower latency, but it also can lead to, in order to prevent congestion loss, that can lead to huge buffer requirements at the edge, at, you know, when you get to the end of the network. As I listen okay. to you talk so those about are related it, Norm, characteristics. This, as I listen to you talk about it, Norm, this sounds like it's additional uh, fodder for the strengths, the strengths line on the work conserving slide, as opposed to something something independent. That's possible. That's possible. Uh, in I just like, I'd uh, like, it would be nice to see that someplace in the presentation. Cool. If if this goes forward, that's that's uh, good. Yes, uh, before Gina, moving on, I think? guess it would be good to clarify this as this is really a new taxonomy the buffer space because i think this comes from the design i agree with norm or the how to say the nature of the queuing solution or do you really want to just bind it with work, work conserving or not i i i was just throwing it out uh, to to the group that uh no. Maybe it's maybe a lump it with work. Maybe a lump it is one of the strengths or weaknesses uh, in the work conserving category. Because this leads to one of the questions I wanted to ask at the end of this presentation: that uh, is the group happy with the? Uh, uh, this is an initial shot. So uh, the list of taxonomic criteria provided, or are there further ideas? 
uh, and so on. Should we make changes? Should something be removed? Something be added? So this is a good discussion, and uh, thank you for bringing this one into consideration, Norm. Like it's we need to decide if is it a new criteria or. Yeah, if I may interrupt, um, yeah, as Kwan has uh, mentioned in her email, the jitter, the performance is three aspects, the latency, jitter, and the buffer requirements. But uh, only the latency aspect is covered here. So in the future, the jitter has to be also covered, and the buffer requirements must be covered as well. Thank you. And yeah, um, there are lots of room for improvement. Okay, let's go to the queue. Uh, Shafu is next. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, 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 this is the property of the working server. So I think it is not a new card, uh, taxonomy. Mm, yeah, uh, for uh, for this pro uh, property of working server, that uh, you it will uh, need a large buffer space to uh, to 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 store the bus occupation yeah uh, 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 i have given some more uh, analysis for uh, for the data night draft or the tgf draft uh, for this issue uh, in belief that uh, for working server uh, model uh, it will be applied in uh, small networks with, uh, with few hopes that means uh, the past accumulation is not uh, too uh, serious. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, Yisu, please. Um, actually, I have a question for the taxonomy. Um, I think David also sh showed his slides, say how we would like to use this draft. So from uh, from my understanding, the taxonomy um, is 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 different from the thing that we try to say. Okay, this solution will improve the, for example, the buffer space utilization, bandwidth or bandwidth utilization, or improve this or improve that. So for me, I think the taxonomy should be some bigger dimension. Uh, it looks like uh, whether it requires a synchronization or not require the synchronization um, can fit into this category because it's more like a taxonomy thing. However, for those, for, for some of the enhancement being proposed, for example, uh, the variants of the existing, uh, variants of, of the existing mechanism, it may not uh, say, okay, uh, it is try to uh, move this, move, move the original one from the work conserving to uh, sorry to now work conserving from now work conserving to work conserving or move from the uh, synchronous to asynchronous kind of thing it's, it, it looks like within the same taxonomy uh, trying to improve the for example the bandwidth utilization or improve the buffer space or improve this or improve that so i i think my comment is we um we can consider that taxonomy is a bigger a bigger dimension just to categorize different uh, dif different uh, 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 solutions, solution groups. Uh, within each of the solution group, uh, there could be some smaller dimension that can be improved. So, uh, so in following this idea, we the better uh, not to put too much taxonomy like put 12 or 13 something so so that's that's my that's my thoughts okay no please go ahead one item i didn't see in the taxonomy is the um computation required the calculations required to create a new reservation Yeah, um, there are. I mean, this is strictly data plane. I mean, that's an aspect of uh -huh. scaling. 
Right, um, exactly. You, you, so you I, I I try to mention that here and there. For example, um, the rate-based solutions has simple process for the admission control. So such an aspect is covered uh, slightly here and there, but um, it is covered in the requirement document in the networking group. So I well, I intentionally well, avoid. Yeah, I think it's. I, I think it's relevant to the taxonomy. Uh, uh, there are solutions that that make sacrifices in uh, the end-to-end -end delivery time that they can guarantee in the interests of making uh, admission control trivial. Uh, and related to that is how much, uh, I mean, you talk about complexity, that's that's something that's more a source of argument than, than um, enlightenment, I think. But um, uh, whether or not state machines are required per flow or per class or per aggregation or not at all, how much, how, uh, do you have to touch a do you have to touch all of the nodes along the path of the new flow if you add a new flow right uh, this this some, very important some aspect algorithms right requires zero touch when you add a right. flow right right that's and, very important but and, in terms of, when you when you, when you want if you want to say complexity there are very different types of complexity for example so for example, syscore requires uh, uh, priority scheduling. That is, the packet has to be ordered according to some, uh, according to uh, some priority that is assigned per packet. That is the source of the complexity. But in terms of the admission control, it is very simple. But some other solution has simple FIFO queue and FIFO management, but the admission control or slot allocation, those things are very complex. So in the taxonomy draft, I would I would like to not go into detail about the old implementation complexities because um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's too complex to say. Okay. But yeah. Should uh, I'm just asking? Should uh, the calculations required to uh, uh, to allocate resources for a flow, and should um, uh, amount uh, uh, should should uh, per per node state machine be criteria for part of the taxonomy? Just, uh, uh, yeah, Gino, one more aspect that uh, no, uh, the suggestion is not implementation complexity. Uh, that, that, that should not be part of it, I agree. But Norm's point is like establish flow establishment or what's uh, adding new flow that uh, could be an important scaling aspect. I thought the risk that. At the yeah, risk of sounding like a broken record, this is... sounds like an engineering, uh, an engineering uh, aspect that that falls under strengths and weaknesses in the taxonomy, uh, 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 taxonomy uh, approach that uh, is is being discussed here. Okay. Yeah, before... I agree to I agree to David. Um, we can discuss that complexity aspect here, but. But that's not the yeah. Yeah. the essence, yeah. I think. Yeah, and I want to reinforce something I'm sort of saying here, which is the taxonomy does not limit the topics for discussion. Any and all engineering trade-offs are certainly highly germane to picking an algorithm. It's trying to to sort the algorithms into categories so so that uh, we understand uh, sort of how they are alike uh, alike and different at some sort of category level. 
Okay. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I am next in the queue, and I I'm trying to respond and come back to Jesus' points on why are we doing this, and also this is why I brought back David's uh, slide. Actually, when uh, we can uh, declare victory. So just to remind everyone, why are we doing this whole exercise that uh, uh, some contributors did claim that existing solution, queuing solutions are not, uh, do not scale well enough for the use cases. Uh, people want to go for that net and uh, there are now queuing solution proposals on the table. And uh, at the end, uh, uh, we would like to down select to a few of solutions uh, if and uh, if we go for it, them uh, to standardize as DeathNet queuing solutions. So ultimately, I think that's why uh, we are doing all this exercise to select uh, which ones to go for. Uh, I hope I answered that question. And, and uh, I think uh, if if I'm not mistaken, then, uh, then the next steps and so on uh, could be crafted along uh, making this progress along these lines. Uh, let's go through the queue. Uh, Shafu has been patient and then Norm. Yeah, Shafu, please. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, 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 for the complexity, I, uh, my point is that uh, I think uh, the entire the entire queuing system uh, is complex. Uh, maybe uh, different solutions distribute uh, the entire complexity and the uh, control play and the uh, data play uh, just with uh, different uh, proportions. Yes, this is, that, that is my point. Thank you. Okay, Norm, please. Uh, I, I, heard, I heard two different things from David and from you, Janos. I, I liked what David said. Uh, in in the sense that uh, 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 this this set of criteria, I think, is very illuminating. It really helps you. I I, I want to thank you for this. It helps you understand the different solutions and compare them. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so you can tell are these. It helps you figure out are these two the same or not. That that's interesting. But what I heard from you, Janos was that uh, this might be a list of criteria for making our selection of which ones we want. Okay, in the first case, for example, buffer requirements are just something that sort of falls out of the uh, work conservation. Uh, and do you have to touch each node in order to set up a flow? Do you have to do you have to do a management touch on each node in order to set up the flow is maybe just an engineering thing or obvious from what you're looking at. If this is a list of criteria for selecting and if we're going to do one of those and I hope we're not one of those awful charts of criteria and assigning point values to each one and how do you rate on each of these criteria and which one gets the total point value. Uh, then there's a whole lot of stuff that needs to go in here and, and different stuff. Uh, because suddenly uh, class dominant is a bad thing. And I, I don't think that's what we want. No, I didn't, I agree that I didn't, want, I don't want to have such a chart, but uh, uh, my, my Understanding is we have a lot of solutions on the table and we're trying to uh, figure out how to find a grip on them. Uh, we, we have 15 minutes, so somehow we should formulate what do we do next uh, and so on. But David, please go ahead. Well, looking at um, what was listed under what would serious success look like, um, I think we have a good set of proposed classification criteria for, for the taxonomy and an initial top-down taxonomy of the uh, TSN and, and DETNET uh, and DETNET mechanisms that uh, allow us to see which ones are highly similar to each other. The obvious example being that we have multiple uh, C, uh, CQF variants uh, in, in front of us. Um, and 
it's I think it's starting to answer the role of taxonomy, where I think I'm agreeing with uh, uh, with Norm and others that uh, the taxonomy helps us to identify the different classes of algorithms, but it doesn't limit what we look at in deciding whether an algorithm is suitable to standardize. Sure. Okay. Any further comments? We wanted to save the last 10 minutes for planning next steps. We have five min minutes for discussion left. And uh, if you are taking a, a look at the notes, uh, uh, the conclusions from discussion, uh, uh, I'm not sure if we, if, if we have, if we, what is the conclusion? What is the takeaway? So maybe if there are views on, 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 on that, uh, that would be very helpful. Like, uh, I did not capture your last sentence, David, but I think uh, that could be uh, one of the, one of the takeaways from the meeting, I think. I can double check in the recording. <laughs> So any any further feelings on 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 like uh, takeaways from the meeting uh, to be captured in the notes minutes <laughs> and thank you Carlos for for taking care of the notes uh Janos, can I yes please yeah uh, thank you yeah I agree that the the taxonomy draft is to categorize the solutions into some of the categories. And based on those categories, you can choose what solution should have proceeded, should proceed. Um, each category has its own uh, pros and cons. For example, the InterServe integrated services and differentiated services has their have their own pros and cons. And as we can see in the TS and TG, there are lots of different solutions with different applicability and use cases. And the same thing can be happening in our then working group. Um, as you can see in the final visualization uh, slide that I have made, I think there are uh, roughly four different categories of the solutions among our uh, currently being proposed solutions. So the first one is the syscore, the second is the EDF, and the fourth is the TAS variance. Oh, that's a third, sorry. The fourth is the CQF variance. So I think um, selecting one of solutions in each four category would be a good start. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Maybe just to react on on the so many TSN solutions, and um, I would be happy for you norm if you reflect on it i think that it's not that so many so that is uh, the good old stick priority of course which is everywhere that is the credit space shaper for which came with avb uh, and uh, that is a uh, scheduled traffic and uh, that is ats and uh, many sch multiple schemes of scheduled traffic like uh, the cyclic uh, queuing uh, type of variants and uh, actually you could uh, place paternoster in the spectrum of uh, somewhere between cqf and ats if you wish and i think this is one of the great jobs this qdf draft norm is developing or leading is doing to somehow integrate that like these TSN solutions may be so many, may look like so many at the first place, but actually 
there are some common routes, uh, the way I see it at least. But in any case, we are not bound to select only one in that net. So that's uh, uh, being discussed and uh, that's, that's fine. I guess it would be uh, good uh, not to have like five, but uh, this is uh, what we are discussing. So we are in the last uh, 10 minutes, which is uh, sort of uh, intended for next steps, uh, more or less in the logistics uh, type of approach just to just to bring us on a common page and uh, as for next steps uh, i would like to point out that uh, as we keep saying we are contribution driven and many thanks for, thanks for all those who have take uh, took the keyboard and uh, brought uh, the taxonomy draft uh, for us for discussion it's been a very good uh, uh, discussion and useful. Uh, also, it was um, mentioned uh, this idea of some example use case that could be used uh, as we discussed that is uh, that could be a contribution as well. And uh, based on the discussions happened during this uh, interim, uh, contri further contributions are welcome. So this this can be continuation and updates in in the current taxonomy draft. Uh, if somebody has somewhat uh, completely different ideas or something like that, then then the new drafts are welcome as well. The separate draft, but uh, I guess uh, joint efforts are can be more productive. David, please uh, go ahead. If I want to take a moment to thank Janu and the authors of the taxonomy draft. We have had a much more interesting, technically grounded and productive discussion this meeting than I was expecting 24 hours ago. So thank you very much to everybody who worked on that and Jinu in particular uh, for, uh, for, for leading uh, the, the discussion here. Thank you, David, for thank expressing you. it better than me. Gino, Gino please. Yeah, I, I want to say thank you to David and all of our working group members and especially the co-authors of the draft Xiaofu, Sue Song and Turles. Thank you. Yeah, so I also did uh, try to say thanks uh, to all the contributors. Uh, David phrased it better than me. And uh, further contributions are really uh, welcome. We discussed a bit uh, with David and Lou the logistics and actually the Chinese New Year holiday is coming this coming weekend. And then there is not so much left until the next IETF, like IETF 119. Uh, so practically speaking, uh, IETF 119 is the is the next venue for discussions. I would say we, ha we have requested two slots. Uh, hopefully we will have enough time for discussion. So I would suggest uh, that uh, being a target for discussion. And of course, we have the email list, which is the primary forum. So please uh, uh, use that for for discussions as well. And I guess we will uh, uh, discuss uh, at the IETF on, on how to continue in terms of uh, uh, further virtual meetings uh, before the July IETF. At least uh, that's... Uh, what I have in mind. I don't know if David, you would like to add on uh, uh, further aspects on the on next steps. No, I think that's fine. I think uh, the working group leadership, uh, which I think means Lou, Lou, Janos, and myself, need to have an offline an, an offline discussion of. Uh, of, of what of what next steps are, but I think we've made very good progress on what we set out to do in this meeting. Yes, I agree. Thank you, David. And we have five minutes left. So any last thoughts, uh, questions, comments before closing the meeting? I've, I've found it very illuminating. Thank you for the presentation. Indeed, thank you. David?
Nobody is in the queue. No further comments. Gino, um, please. Yeah, I would like to thank to Norman uh, for the valuable comments. Well, um, I will try to update uh, the draft and make a presentation in the the next IETF meeting in Brisbane. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if no further thoughts, then uh, let's uh, close this meeting and uh, we then uh, polite enough to everyone, giving five minutes before your next meeting to stretch your leg. <laughs> Yizu, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank you. That's a great meeting before Chinese New Year. So, <laughs> and indeed, uh, enjoy the holiday and happy yeah, yeah, Chinese New Year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Shafu. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, also, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's close this meeting. The meeting is adjourned. Many thanks to everyone. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.